Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Priya Mistri and I'm a general dentist with a practice dedicated to taking care of patients with TMJ disorders. Today's video is about jaw joint noises. So I am part of a wonderful Facebook support group for patients who are suffering from TMJ disorders. And I've met some lovely people on there and people that are just in a lot of pain. And one of the questions that I see commonly in this group is, my jaw made this sound, what does that mean? I had a sudden snap in my jaw and suddenly symptoms took off. I wasn't having any pain before, but now it's clicking and popping all the time and I have pain with it or just a variety of questions based off of jaw joint noises. So I wanted to make a video to help explain what some of these most common noises most likely mean. So before we proceed into the noises themselves, it is important to review the anatomy of the joint. So I will be brief with this since I've done it in other videos and you may already know this, but the temporomandibular joint has two bony components the condyle, which is the bony knob that our mandible ends on, and the temporal bone, which is a skull bone. The temporal bone has two parts to it that are pertinent to the temporomandibular joint, and that is a concavity called the fossa and a convexity called the articular eminence. Between the two bony components of the joint is an articular disc that is made of cartilage, kind of similar to the meniscus in our knees. That disc is biconcave in shape and serves as a shock absorber or a cushion between the bony components of the joint. So in all movements, opening, closing, moving right and left, forward and backwards, that disc should stay between the bony components of the joint. In front of the articular disc is the troublemaker muscle. That's called the lateral pterygoid muscle. Behind the disc is some highly innervated and highly vascularized tissue called the retrodiscal tissue. Along with all these structures, there's also joint space. So there should be adequate space between the condyle, the articular disc, and the temporal bone. And that space allows the disc to move the little amount that it should, and for the synovial fluid to flow in and out and keep everything nice and lubricated. And of course, to prevent compression within the joint, that space is needed as well. And lastly, there's a fibrous capsule and some ligaments that hold everything in place. So the one ligament in particular that we'll be referring to today is the lateral collateral ligament. And that is the one that most easily gets strained or stretched in this joint. So moving forward, I've broken up the jaw joint noises into four main noises that we see at our practice. The first is the pop or the click. That's probably the most common one I hear about. My jaw pops all the time or my jaw clicks all the time. Yeah, that's normal for me. Second is something called crepitus and it's sort of like a crackly noise. And third, people have said that they hear a loud snap or crack or pop and they just hear it once in one or the other joint and after that, their TMJ symptoms typically start to take off and they get a lot worse. So that snap, that isolated snap or crack or pop can be followed by uh, clicking and popping that starts to happen all the time that wasn't there before or just pain in or around that joint. And then lastly, I don't know if this really counts as a noise, but it's the cessation of noise. So it was popping and clicking all the time on one side and then suddenly it stopped. So we'll go over all four and sort of what's happening in the joint. So the first is that pop or that click. So if you take a look at the joint in this diagram here, you'll see that the disc is out of alignment. It is not between the two bony components of the joint. So it's already being a bad boy and it's too far forward. It's not where it's supposed to be. And so what happens is when this patient goes to open or when the skull goes to open rather, you're gonna see that the condyle gets, regains that disc. So the disc is able to get back onto the condyle and that's the pop. And then when the patient closes again, it gets back off the condyle, click or pop again. Pops and clicks are kind of the same thing. So in medical terms, anytime a body part can get back into alignment, that is called reduction. So every pop or click is a reduction or getting back out of alignment, non-reduction, I guess. So this right here is an articular disc that is displaced. So it's not where it's supposed to be, but it's able to get back into alignment 
even for a little while during the open and then close cycle. So it's a disc that's displaced with reduction, with the ability to get back into alignment. So we'll take a moment and just sort of look at this animation and you can see that when the patient goes to open, pop, gets back on, and then close, pop, gets back off. So we can take a moment here to watch. So that right there is an articular disc that is displaced with reduction. So that is what that popping and clicking is. And it may stay that way forever, or it could progress to the disc being displaced without reduction, which is not a fun condition, and that is the jaw locking closed. The second noise is called crepitus. Crepitus is sort of a crackly, grainy sound um, in the joint, and people don't really like the way it sounds. They don't like any of the noises, but this particular noise just tends to rub people the wrong way, kind of like fingernails on a chalkboard. So with crepitus, what's happening is that there's too much compression within the joint. So typically the articular disc is too compressed. There's not enough joint space like we discussed before. And the articular disc can actually tear and there can be bone on bone contact. And that bone can actually start to roughen up as well. So the condyle as well as the temporal bone in the skull. So the two bony components of the joint can start to break down if this has been going on for too long and that's going to cause that kind of crackly sound and so this crepitus is typically associated with chronic clenchers so people that have been clenching for a long 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 time they've been putting way too much pressure and there's too much compression within the joint for a long period of time that can then thin out or tear the articular disc and cause these sounds crepitus is usually indicative of advanced osteoarthritic degenerative changes in the joint. Can it be quieted down? Sometimes, yes, it can. Um, so what's great about the articular disc is that it's highly capable of remodeling. It is a very unique type of tissue that's only found in three places in our bodies. That's in the joint itself, the pubic symphysis, and where the clavicle attaches to the chest wall. So because this tissue is so unique and highly adaptable and highly capable of remodeling, it can repair itself to some extent. And that's sort of what we depend upon uh, along with our orthotics and our jaw manipulation, et cetera, all the treatment protocols that we use here to, to get patients good results and quieter joints. So the third sound is a loud snap or crack or pop that patients feel and hear and they just say, what was that? And sometimes it can happen when they yawn really, really wide or they're screaming on a roller coaster or just kind of randomly, like they bite into something at just the wrong angle and it, they get that loud kind of snap sound is how I've heard it described most commonly. And typically what's happening there, and, and that's followed by a progression of then TMJ symptoms. So the joints were quiet, then there was a loud snap one day that was just an isolated incident, and then suddenly there was an incessant popping and clicking that was, that was not there before, or their jaw started hurting a lot and that wasn't there before. So typically what happens with that loud snap is that that lateral collateral ligament which attaches to the disc gets stretched or strained and then the disc is not held on to the condyle as tightly as it should be so it can more easily become displaced leading to pops and clicks like we saw with the first joint noise in this video so that's typically what that isolated snap crack kind of pop is and fourth so I don't know if this really counts, but it's the cessation of noise, as I discussed before. So that fourth and last noise is the lack of noise. So if a joint was clicking, popping, clicking, popping, clicking, popping, and suddenly, boom, it went silent, typically what happens is the disc is completely out of alignment and the, and the jaw actually locks closed. And that is a very difficult condition to treat. It's very doable, but it's, it's not super easy. And I have a whole video on that that's called Jaw Locked Closed, so you guys can check that out. Um, and those are basically the four joint noises. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned something or you liked it, please click like below, subscribe to my channel. There's so much more to come, including some patient testimonials in the near future here. So thank you guys for your support and I hope to see you all again soon. Thanks.